Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and in this video we're going to go over the new pointless update notice, as well as a guide for how to beat the uh, the battle unlocks for the golden bombs. I had a couple people in my last video ask for that, so I am going to show that. But first, I want to get into the notices here, because we have this update notice, version 1.5.1, and oh man, okay, what's it going to be? What's it going to be? Um, we'd like to introduce the content of the update. Awesome. Update details. Events in January. Details of each event will be posted in a notice at a later date. Did they just give me a notice about a notice that's upcoming? Okay, uh, let's let's keep going. Other minor quality of life improvements. That's it. That's it. I don't I don't see the point. It's like they literally just gave us a notice that gives no information. It's like, hey, we're going to come out with another update. Yeah, which they do regularly. I'm um, not going to say anything about what you can expect. I I just don't, I don't see the point in that. Maybe they feel bad because they haven't been putting out much. Hmm, could be. And just, just to give an idea here. If you look at, you know, like a previous update notice, right? 1.5. At least they go through, hey, look, new playable character, new chapter, new dungeon. Like, they're giving us a reason to be excited about the upcoming update. That's what an update notice should be. This just feels like somebody dropped the ball. Yeah, we're going to release the... Uh, which doesn't even make sense events in January because January is almost over. So maybe this should have been February. But let's be honest, the event schedule is kind of static. doesn't really change. And mm, minor quality of life improvements. What could those be? I would at least be excited if they told us what some of these minor quality of life improvements would be. I can tell you, uh, somebody asked if I knew what those were, I have no idea, but I can say they have plenty to choose from, uh, anywhere from minor to major, but you know, I did a video on top five quality of life improvements I'd like to see. And the interesting thing about that video is I got 132 comments on that video in just under 1900 views. And I can tell you based on analytics for my channel that that amount of comments is what I would normally expect on a video that got twice as many views. So it definitely seems like a lot of you had some pretty strong opinions and wanted to be heard on quality of life updates. Uh, no telling what these are going to be because there's just so many things they could do. I wish they would just let us know. Otherwise, I see no point in notifying us that there's going to be an update. Why? Like, especially when you're giving no context to what the update's going to entail exactly. Uh, anyway, just my two cents on that. Now, regarding the event, Golden Bomb Rush, I know this won't apply to most of you, but because I know there are some people that are still struggling and maybe, you know, you follow me primarily for your Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis content, I do feel, uh, you know, like some responsibility to help you out here. So that's what I'm going to do. So what you're going to be watching is me do the Unlock Battle 5, because if you can beat Unlock Battle 5, then you can beat 4 or 3 or any of the other ones. And uh, it's generally the same strategy. So let's go ahead and get into it. And I will show you the uh, team that I used. Uh, it's not the Mithril Mine team. I just was too lazy to change the name. So we're going to use a team like I've tried to do kind of as, as generic of a team as possible. Something that would be extremely new player friendly or just low account power friendly. Now, before we get started, we're going to just take a look at the enemies so we know what we're dealing with. We have two dorky faces, one on each side of the spooky balloon. They are weak to wind. Uh, they do some things that really suck. Uh, this weary breath, it inflicts physical attack and magical attack down, which is really annoying. So I would recommend killing them off first, and that's what we'll be doing in this video. As for the spooky balloon, he can't be debuffed in any meaningful way, so that really sucks. He's weak to lightning and win, and... When he uses threat assessment, he gives himself a barrier to one of those elements along with one property. And when the game says property, what they mean is either physical or magical. So he's going to give himself essentially two barriers every time he runs threat assessment two, right? One of the barriers is going to be either lightning or wind. The other barrier is going to be either physical or magical. So the way that I'm tackling this fight is I'm going to try to bring people that can do both of these elements and then both physical and magical so that I can alternate on those. 
There's a lot of variations to how you could do this. I just set this team up, honestly, and just ran with it. I did it in my first try, and this is not an overly powerful team. As you can see, I'm also not going to be using hardly any weapons that aren't free to play. So let's go ahead and get into it. Aerith here is set up for healing, and honestly, she doesn't have a whole lot of time to do a lot of DPS, so I would suggest keeping her with that. Uh, Sub-equipment, all free weapons, and I went with Lefko Kibseli for just general stats and some physical defense. I uh, went with this one just for attack stats, to be honest with you, and uh, the Iron Collar, same thing, attack stats because I wanted to be able to do as much damage as I possibly could, and I felt like 1856 heal would have been plenty. Now, one thing I will tell you is different than, you know, what I would do differently. So here I brought uh, Aurora Blow, and, you know, kind of, I just didn't know, because I've got Tifa doing physical wind damage, so I thought Aerith also, you know, when he's got the wind barrier up, it's probably going to be to physical, and most likely when he has the lightning barrier up, it's going to be to magical because of the way I set my team up. Then I gave her one physical and one um, magical thunder. I wouldn't do that in the future. I would take out this Thundara blow and I would just put a single target Kira. My team would have been way better suited for a single target Kira. Uh, other than that, I just want to note that these are all free. This is free. So she has one non free to play weapon on her. Okay, coming over to Lucia. The most important weapon I've got on her is uh, Rifle of Levin, which was free. And why? Uh, because it does a magical lightning damage. So we're doing physical wind, magical lightning. Uh, she's also got Ramu on her, um, again, because lightning. Um, other than that, these are all stat sticks because there's no sigils that you need to break. So I put as many magic attack plus materials as I could jam on her. That's what these are. They have no other bearing other than magic attack stat for me. They're literally the top three when you sort by magic attack. Sub equipment, magic attack, magic attack, uh, nameless. Again, still a free weapon if you were playing during the time of Sephiroth. Maybe that's a cheat for newer players because they might not have gotten that. Uh, but it was given to us for free and I've just drawn a buku amount of copies. But I'm doing it for the HP. That's the only reason I'm using this weapon. So uh, if you don't have nameless or it's not start up enough for you, uh, pick, take your pick. Uh, you could use Thousand Waves. You could use Beach Parasol. You could use Hellhouse Cannon, just anything that gives you some HP stats on her at this point, because she did need some survivability. And again, notice every single weapon that she is using is free to play. Every single one. Okay, so so far, two characters down, we've used one weapon that wasn't given to us for free or able to be overboosted for free. And then last, we have Tifa. Tifa's going to be doing our wind damage. That's why she has motor drive. Uh, you know, honestly, 500% physical wind damage is a lot, but it's not that much more than you could do with a materia. Uh, lifeguard wraps is not free. However, uh, I thought about using Bahamut knuckles because those are free, um, but it actually raises her stats pretty significantly. So I didn't go with those. Um, and there is a point in later on where the extra heal does come into play. But I'm going to essentially count this as like one non-free-to-play weapon. Using Shiva, because I don't have her water kick really leveled up. It's like level three. So Shiva is going to do more damage. That's the only reason I'm using her. Uh, these are all physical stat sticks. So literally sort by physical attack. Um, and that's it. One, two, and three. Uh, Sub-equipment. We've got um, this here, Ifrit's Sword. And this is just for some HP and general stats. Uh, we've got... Iron Greatsword, again, just stats, 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 and less uh, Torn Wing, and once again, just going for stats, and I also wanted to use as many free-to-play weapons as possible. So, depending how you want to look at it, uh, one to two non-free-to-play weapons, I kind of counted as one because I could have stuck in a free-to-play weapon that would have made her stronger. Uh, so, so far, that makes one, two total weapons in this setup that are not free-to-play or that took you know, an, a regular draw to achieve. So there we go. And that is the setup. Physical wind damage on her, magical lightning damage on Lucia, healing with Aerith, and uh, now I will show you the run. All right, coming into the fight, I have sped this up 50% because it took like six minutes for me to beat it. 
and you know that gets a little bit boring over time so anyway first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take out these dorky faces and yeah they're doing the weary breath and you can see that Tifa and Lucia both have like high potency attack down on everything uh, it's just kind of what it is then you'll notice that he starts debuffing Tifa here with this uh, wind debuff and then he's gonna use Gale pistols which is you know presumably a wind attack that's magical so I casted solid man solid man award on Tifa and then I'm still doing damage to this dorky face with Aerith. I probably should have used Solid Mana Ward one more time on Tifa. Because I feel like, you know, at least giving her the buff to magic defense helps kind of negate some of that. But I got myself in a little bit of a position where I was worried about Tifa dying. So now I had to make sure that I'm switching my stances when he's using Gale Pistols. I'm having to make sure that I keep casting Kiragas. Again, if you brought a single target Kira that would be so much better for what's happening. And ultimately this would have just gone a little bit smoother. But uh, kind of sometimes it's good to see, you know, when mistakes are made because ultimately this is still going to be a clear. So hopefully that gives you some sort of uh, inspiration or motivation if that's what you're needing. Uh, go ahead and unleash my limits. I probably should have used those to do some like Animation canceling, uh, that would have been fancy, like this Gale Pistols, you know, you could cancel that animation when you see it come up, use one of the limits, might have made my life a little bit easier, um, but like I said, not the cleanest run, but it does work, so hey, if you play cleaner than me, then great. Now there, I did actually cancel that animation, kudos to me, uh, but like I was saying, if you play cleaner, then this will just go easier, um, but you can see here again, Aerith has the like mega win debuff, and so I'm actually gonna do a second solid mana ward on her, which is what I should have done on Tifa. And that's just to give her a little bit more defense against those Gale pistols. He does kind of alternate between doing the magic attack and then a physical attack. So, you know, you could bring like Sephiroth or somebody that has, you know, with Torn Wings, something that does a defense buff if you wanted, because when he kind of locks in on a target, he kind of locks in and it's not like he really switches it up much. And so you'll notice the first, you know, barrage, it was all on Tifa. This time it's all on Aerith. You know, whoever he debuffs, that's who he's going to target uh, until, you know, he goes through this cycle again. Okay, so, you know, he uh, heals himself, uh, but then shortly after it's followed by breakdown. That's the chance to really get your damage in. So you'll notice that not too long ago I used Ramu. I should have saved it for this moment, probably. That would have been better. Uh, here comes arm sweep, and this is going to do two things. One, it's a physical AoE attack that does a pretty good amount of damage. It also lowers physical defense by low potency. And, you know, that kind of adds up because now he's doing full blast. Another AoE physical attack that lowers by high potency and stacks so now we have four arrows down of physical defense this is where Aerith's job gets pretty hard because you know uh, there's a lot of things going on and I noticed that my limit breaks almost up here this is why I start casting the arrow blows because I know if I don't get this healing wind off Aerith is going to die to that next arm sweep luckily I got it off and spoiler alert Aerith barely survives here and Tifa, I leave it in defense stance. She does cast healing waves. So now Aerith actually has some HP in the regen. Luckily from her limit is still ticking away. Judgment Bolt comes back up just in the nick of time and we kill him. That's the fight. Like I said, uh, not the cleanest, sharpest fight, but you know, hey, uh, that's, that's what it kind of looks like in real life, right? <laughs> when you don't run this, you know, three or four times back to back to back, you make some uh, mistakes. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already. I appreciate everybody's support. And as always, thanks for watching.